If you want to make history by changing history, smash the hourglass. Oh my gosh. Yep. That's Erica. You're probably wondering how she got here. Well, I am too, because up until now, she's been pretty invisible. Regardless, it's a new era of Survivor, which means we don't really do merges like we used to. We used to just drop buffs and go to Applebee's, but now it's a whole lot more complicated. First, we split the cast into two teams, not exactly tribes, but it's the same thing, except that two people don't get picked for either team. They get the gray rocks. They don't get to compete. So we run the immunity challenge and five people are safe, but then they pick one of the the two gray rocks to join them being immune, also getting to sit at the merge feast. But this is the important part. This is why the gray rocks exist. The other gray rock goes to Exile Island for the whole episode because they're an outcast. And then the other five people who lost the challenge are now in trouble, but they still merge even though they don't have buffs yet. But then we cut back to Exile Island and suddenly. Oh my gosh. You've earned your spot out here. You're still in the game. What you do with this decision is up to you. It's obviously a big strategic decision. I'm gonna leave you with it. Yep. That's Erica, and that is how she got here. Ladies and gents, internet, my name is Pritium, and welcome to the merge of Survivor 41. It took us two whole episodes, but we finally got those red buffs. Certainly took a lot longer than it probably took Erica to smash that hourglass and turn back time. Wait, why are we smashing the hourglass again? Why not just turn it over? Eh, whatever. So yeah, we start the big reveal of Erica's choice at the challenge. Turns out, Erica did what I think all of us would do. She saved herself from imminent doom. Heather is pleased, the other team less so. This leads to the challenge that ends up with Ricard winning the first individual immunity by a toenail. Erica tells us that her little Luvu lamb days are over. It's time to break out of her cage and get sucked up into the majority alliance that wanted to vote her out in the previous episode. Damn it, Erica, where did you go? Anyway, let's bust out the battle map, we've got a merge to chart. We start with Liana being happy to be safe. She's got her knowledge as power, her kip advantage, and she's ready to use it. Danny, Deshaun, and Shan first meet on the beach, and Danny is mad at Jeff for lying to them. Since when did winning immunity not mean you won immunity? What game did he sign up for? Deshaun and Shan try to reason with him, but I actually kind of agree with Danny. Let the players know the game they're playing. It's a bit difficult to respect randomness. Ricard, Sydney, Danny, Deshaun, and Shan convene. Ricard speculates that Nasir has an idol, which means they should target Evie because only five people can be targeted and three of them are in this conversation. Ricard clearly learned from Brad's folly and knows better. Given Ricard won immunity and wants to work with Danny, Deshaun, and Sydney, it only leaves Evie on the table. So Evie is now the primary target for this budding majority alliance. Liana gets informed by the rest that Evie is the target, which shocks Liana, but she also realizes it's a game and blood has to get spilled at some point. Evie is a threat. She's smart, she's calculated, Liana worked with her for the entire first half of the game, so here we go. Let the battle commence. Shan explains to Liana that if Evie goes, that's going to sever the connection between Xander and Tiffany. It's a good move, except for one problem. Xander and Tiffany meet up and get on the same page. They want to work with Evie going forward. They're a solid trio. Evie is clearly a target, and that means that Xander is going to play his idol for her tonight. Evie joins them to confirm her status and hugs the two of them. She's sad, but Xander looks at Evie as his big sister. He's going to protect her if he can. Xander wants to target Deshaun. He is the biggest threat of those who can receive votes. They think Sydney could potentially work with them in the future too. Evie did spend time with Deshaun at the summit, the Shipwill Island, several episodes ago and knows that he's a smart guy. He could absolutely win this game. So yeah, targeting him, it's a good move. Except for one problem. Flashback, Evie learned that Liana is lying to the Yase tribe. In the previous episode, Tiffany learned about Liana's advantage after the beans accidentally got spilled. Tiffany then relayed this information to Evie, who relayed it to Xander. And now Xander, Evie, and Tiffany are really all on the same page. They can't trust Liana. She's much closer to Shan than them. So they need to figure out a new plan to thwart this overpowered advantage or else they're all screwed. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of the camp, Ricard and Erica reminisce about the hourglass. Those were the good old days, weren't they, Erica? Different timeline, alternate reality. When he was immune and she wasn't. 
Well, they're both now immune. He won the challenge, so whatever. Deshaun meets up with Nasir and lets him know that the majority of the tribe is targeting Evi. Nasir is on board. His closest allies are all blue. He is from the blue tribe, so he's with them. In the middle of the camp, Danny and Xander chat. And this is kind of like two generals meeting up at the halfway point of the battlefield. Also, Sydney's there, uh, just kind of in the middle. Xander straight up tells Danny that Evi is going to be safe tonight. He's using his idol. He doesn't mind saying this because everyone knows he has the idol. It's not exactly a secret, you know, kind of like butterflies being your dead relatives. It's common knowledge. And when everyone has that knowledge, it's not so powerful being hidden, is it? Xander then tells Danny about Liana's advantage. She was hiding it from everyone. And this is all a part of Xander's plan to create chaos. He wants to paint a target on Liana and it might be working. Xander then leaves as Liana pulls up to talk to Danny. Danny tells her what Xander just said. And internally, Liana is now panicking. How does he know about it? What does that mean for her? Is this about to become a problem? So Liana scrambles to meet with Shan to go over the rules of the advantage. They just want to be clear. Because suddenly the power of this advantage is beginning to wane before their eyes and it's no longer a done deal that Xander will be holding that idol. Liana then meets with her old tribe baby turtles to talk about what Yase is gonna do. Evie and Xander put up an act, as does Liana. Xander tells Liana that he is 100% playing his idol for Evie. 100%. He is for sure gonna have it on him the whole night. And right when Jeff asks if anyone wants to play an idol, bingo bango. Xander's acting skills are mm, questionable, but no matter. He dips out and Liana and Evie chat. Evie says Xander plans to keep the idol and play it on her. He wants the moment for himself. And that's all Liana needed to hear. So long as she can locate the idol, she doesn't care about any other fake plans to get Deshaun voted out. Which is exactly where Liana goes next. She's really the most active player in this episode. She meets with Deshaun and tells him that Yase are targeting him. Danny and Shan join them in the chat and Deshaun starts to panic. He wants the votes to go to Sydney now if Evie is going to be safe. Shan tries to calm him down. Just trust the core four alliance. Liana has a plan and after tonight, they're going to be the most powerful people in the game. Sydney, on her last chance before tribal council, pulls Shan and Liana aside and tells them that she wants to work with them. She realizes she could get votes and if Evie is safe thanks to Xander, Sydney might be screwed if the vote is split. Liana reassures her, vote for Evie, stick to the plan, it's all going to work out. Liana is channeling her inner partner poverty at the merge of heroes versus villains with the double idol play and tonight there's gonna be fireworks. And wow is that an understatement. I loved this tribal council. I'm not always big into the whispering or the live tribals but given we had subtitles for all of it, I was cool. I could follow along and I think it all made sense. Xander busts out his idol and Liana is like, hey Xander, what you got there? Oh, this? Nothing. Just a fake idol. Bam. Flashback. Alexa, play Extreme Ways. Xander gave Tiffany his idol and extra vote before Tribal and made a fake idol to trick Liana into thinking that he was still holding the real one. Oh, it's brilliant. An impressive performance from all three of the Yase trio to pull this off. And now things get raw and real. The minutes of friendly politics are over. Evie gets sarcastic with Liana, Liana admits the truth and all hell breaks loose. And to keep it simple, even though there's a lot of movement going on, I think a lot of it amounts to, I don't know, the same thing at the end of the day. Through all the whispers and the mumbles, we end up with two groups. Xander, Evie, Tiffany, and kind of Sydney, and then Danny, Deshaun, Shan, Liana, Erica, Nasir, Heather, and Ricard. It's eight to four, although Sydney is technically in the middle, but that's not going to cut it for this tribal. Shan trusts Tiffany a little too much and lets her know that the target is Sydney. Deshaun doesn't love that, but after a lot of deliberation, a vote split is enacted and Deshaun plans to use his extra vote on Evie. So whichever Yase player is holding the idol has to play it for Evie. Sydney begs Xander to have the idol played on her, but it's too little too late. Tiffany leaves the idol play to Xander. It's his call. It was his after all, and he doesn't want Tiffany to use it. He thinks Sydney is more likely to go. Evie should be good. Evie squirms in her seat, but she can only do so much. And then the votes roll in, and in a tribe of 12 people, Sydney is voted out with a plurality of five to four to three. A never before seen vote total in 41 seasons. It's Votagami. Also, Sydney didn't even vote. She played her shot in the dark and it didn't work out, which means she was voted out at her first tribal council without ever casting a vote all season joining the esteemed ranks of Chris Noble from Ghost Island. After all is said and done, after the dust is settled, Jeff gives the remaining 11 players their red merge tribe buffs, and finally, finally, after what feels like an eternity, we have officially merged. 
tiff right yes I don't think it's you. Who do you think it is? I thought it was me. I do not know what the plan is. You think it's me? It could be. And that is where we're at as we enter the first individual portion of a new era of Survivor. Personally, I really enjoyed this merge episode. It was nice to see a bunch of the advantages get flushed. I do feel like we've got too many of them floating about and I often subscribe to the ideology that less is more in this case. But I won't deny, I enjoyed those flashbacks. I hope the editors keep them coming. I have wanted, I have been angling to see moments like these edited into the show for years and I am so excited to actually see them. I do think that the Yase 3 of Xander, Tiffany, and Evie are in a heap of trouble going forward, but now that everyone is available to be voted out, the dynamics could change as soon as the next episode. It could easily turn into like another Malolo, but we've seen underdogs finesse their way to the end before, so who knows? I've liked this cast a lot. A lot of gamers, very conscious of their gameplay. It's nice to see. I think we're gonna have a messy, tangled web of a post-merge coming up if this merge, these two merge episodes were any indication. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video, the breakdown, the battle map. Let me know if you want to see more of them in the future. A huge thank you to my patrons on the screen for helping me put together all of these fake idols for every future tribal council. You can never play it too safely these days. And don't forget, on your way out, knowledge is power. Unless everyone knows that. And I will see you in the next one once I ask, YouTube, is that an idol in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret that I have the hidden immunity idol. It's honestly a burden at this point, so I'm happy to give it away. So I just have one question for one player. Um, do you have an idol, Xander? No, but you can have this fix. Right before we left for tribal, I gave my extra vote and my idol to Tiffany. This is beauty. I also have a fake idol that I made a while ago, and I'm glad I did. Sydney. Oh, I'm sorry, girl. Need to bring me your torch? I'm sorry. You got it. Oh my god, Tiff. Oh my god.